Hi, this is Jim Obermeyer from Christ the Healer Ministries, and I'm going to do something a little different. This is a Christmas broadcast, the second I've made. Please watch the first one, which tells you a little more about the nativity than just what you think happened. It goes into a little more detail, but this is going to be a little different. I'm going to read some readings from the early fathers and saints of the church who have written some beautiful things about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to the earth and the nativity and his birth. And it starts from very early in the times after Christ. Uh, so I'm going to read them to you and then afterwards I'm going to read a poem that I wrote last Christmas. And I'm not a poet, I don't claim to be a poet, but it just kind of came to me. And so I started writing it down and, and I'm going to read that to you in conclusion today. So just open your hearts and let the Lord bless you as I read these beautiful writings about Christmas. Many of them were actually put into song throughout the ages. The first reading is from St. Romanus the Melodist, who lived about 490 to 556 AD. And this is a song that he wrote. Today the Virgin giveth birth to him who is transcendent in essence, and the earth offereth a cave to him who is unapproachable. Angels and shepherds give glory. With a star, the Magi do journey. For our sakes, a young child is born, who is the pre-eternal God. What mysteries beyond mind and speech. God in his compassion is born on earth, putting on the form of a servant that he may snatch from servitude to the enemy them that with fervent love cry out, Blessed art thou, O Savior, who lovest mankind. And then there is St. Joseph the hymnographer who lived in the 800s, and he wrote this, Now is Christ born of Jacob. So Balaam said, And he shall rule over nations and his kingdom. Shall he exalt in grace and shall remain perpetually. That thou mightest fill all things with thy glory. Thou hast come and bowed the heavens till they touched the earth. For as rain upon the fleece hast thou descended into a virgin womb from which thou now comest forth to be born in two natures, O God-man. Beautiful. St. Romanus wrote for another service, a song. Bethlehem has opened Eden. Come, let us behold. We have found joy in this hidden place. Come, let us take possession of the paradise that is within the cave. There the unwatered root has appeared and flowers forth forgiveness. There is found the undug well, which David of old wanted to drink. Where the virgin hath borne a babe and quenched the thirst of Adam and David to see straightway. Therefore, let us hasten to this place where now a young child is born, the pre-eternal God. Justin Martyr, who wrote the first history of the Christian church in about 150 AD, writes, Isaiah's words, he shall take the power of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria, meant that the power of the wicked demon that dwelled in Damascus would be crushed by Christ at his birth. This is shown to have taken place. For the Magi held in servitude as spoils for the commission of every wicked deed through the power of that demon, by coming and worshiping Christ openly revolted against the power that had held them captive. And this dominion scripture has shown us to reside in Damascus. Moreover, that sinful and unjust power is turned well in parable, Samaria. Now, even among you, none can deny that Damascus was and is a part of the land of Arabia, although as now belongs to Syrophoenicia. And St. Cosmos expounds upon this in his matinal hymn, Thou hast shone forth from the tribe of Judah. Thou hast come to plunder the strength of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria, turning their air into faith, beautiful to God. 
Then there is St. Ambrose, who wrote in the 300s. The Bishop of Milan in Italy concurs with this image, saying the root is the household of the Jews. The rod is Mary. The flower of Mary is Christ. She is rightly called a rod, for she is of royal lineage of the house and family of David. Her flower is Christ, who destroyed the stench of worldly pollution and poured out the fragrance of eternal life. As he himself said, I am the flower of the plain, a lily of the valleys. And that is taken from the Song of Solomon. St. Cyril of Alexandria writes, She bore Emmanuel, who is truly God, and the Word was made flesh, and was born according to the flesh, so that we might be found to be brothers of him who is above all creation. He also writes in another letter that he who was ineffable, begotten of the Father before all ages, and finally born as a man from a woman, that he is one person and not two. He is Jesus Christ, the righteous. St. Germanus writes, the express image of the Father, the imprint of his eternity, takes the form of a servant and without undergoing change. He comes forth from a no mother who knew not wedlock. For what he was, he has remained, true God. And what he was not, he has taken upon himself, becoming man through love for mankind. St. John of Damascus also sings, of our renewal through Christ, that we, he did not depart from his own nature, yet he shared in our substance. A most glorious mystery is accomplished today. Nature is renewed and God becomes man. What he was, he has remained. What he was not, he has taken on himself without suffering, commingling, or division. He is the true God-man, Jesus Christ. The poem I've entitled, When Heaven Touched Earth. A star shined bright on that holy night it was not a night that seemed to shine. The crowds milled around looking for a place to bed and a place to have their animals fed. For the census had brought them from miles away to register the next day among the fray. Many did not know why they came, just to be counted or bear some blame. A couple who traveled with a baby due had a hard journey and labor she knew. The time was upon them, but they saw no room of the long, hard journey which jarred her, room, her womb. They didn't see the future with the birth of their baby, that shepherds and angels and glory would be, their spiritual companions to make things right. Their hopes seemed dashed with no place in sight. A dirty stall, possibly a cave, where animals bedded and shelter was made. It was far from a place to bring in a baby with clean bed and grace, but there's always a maybe. Maybe God's plan was not what it seemed. To bring in a baby, the world would redeem. His plan is far above what the eye can see. It uses the lowly things to bring us to our knee. The cry of the baby amidst the dark, the filth of the place made the surroundings start. The moon and the star lit up the sky, and like a light in the dark, the baby did cry. Away in the fields, some shepherds were scared. Should they look at the sight if they dared? As some heavenly creatures appeared with loud sound, mightier than what they had seen, and they fell to the ground. What can come from a lowly trough bed, straw, sheep, animals led by some men who the world would never expect? The lowliest God chose to witness his plan to free a lost world, to give hope to man. When our life seemed the lowest, we have to look up. In the darkness of night, there is always the light. The hope of the world will always be there, a baby, a king, a savior we share. So in hardships and trials, do not mourn. 
See God's gracious light. His child is born. And if you do not know Jesus Christ today, this Christmas, make it the best Christmas you've ever had. Give him your life and receive his. Receive Jesus Christ. He was the baby in the manger. That's what we celebrate the birth. But he now is King of Kings and Lord of Lords ruling over all creation and one day coming back to take those who love him unto himself. If you come to him right now and ask him to come into your heart and ask him to forgive your sins, he will come into your life. Make your life, your body, your heart a throne for the king. And Jesus Christ will give you a life worth living like you've never known before. Maybe you've had a wonderful life. Maybe you haven't. I guarantee you it will make a difference because it will give you the gift of eternal life that you will be with him one day and all of those who love him. It's simple as asking him into your heart. Say this prayer with me and mean it with all of your heart and Jesus Christ will come in. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive my sins. I know I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I receive Jesus into my heart and my life as my Savior and as my Lord. Come in today, Lord Jesus. Make me new. You said that if anyone comes to you, they're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Right now, let those old things pass away. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus Christ will forgive you. It matters not the sin that was in your life. Jesus Christ loves you. And he came for you. This Christmas, let it be the best Christmas of your life. And if you are a Christian, God bless you. And let Jesus be more real to you than ever before as you celebrate his birthday. Let him guide your life and look up Regardless of what you might be going through, there is a light that shines. The Bible tells us that weeping may be endured for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. There will always be morning. No matter what you're going through, there will be a morning. God will give it to you. So now I wish you a blessed and a Merry Christmas. And may God be with you. May he give you his presence and his joy this holiday season and this Christmas. God bless you and Merry Christmas.